identify the masked terrorist with a British accent known as Jihadi John. Since then, two more videos in which he's murdered two more hostages, including the Briton David Haynes, have been posted online. Our technology correspondent Tom Cheshire reports on how facial recognition techniques may have the answer to establishing his identity. Hunting the murderer behind the mask. Nearly a month after the first beheading and still no official identification. But could facial recognition software help? Unsurprisingly, facial recognition works best when you can see the whole face, as in this example. The software treats the face as a 2D image and identifies different points on it, including the tip of the nose, the eyes, the eyebrows, lips and chin. The program then determines the relative position, size and shape of those features. The features are extracted and matched against a database of corresponding images. Now, in the popular imagination of police and spy dramas on TV, agents will scroll through thousands of these, hundreds a second. In fact, it's much quicker. The average facial recognition software will scan one million faces per second. But in the case of David Haynes's murderer, it's a lot trickier. Canadian firm Face Forensics specializes in recognizing partially obscured faces. They extract the few details on show and match that to a generic face then apply similar techniques as with the full face. But the probability of a match is much lower, and then there's still the problem of the low resolution of the photo. At that level, uh, you're not just not getting enough information to differentiate one face from another face. There are tools, of course, which can enhance images. So if you can enhance that image itself, um, then obviously the face recognition system will have a, a much better chance of, uh, of coming up with a, a likely match. Your evil alliance with America. Other pieces of evidence might help put the puzzle together. Human and computer voice recognition is one. Analyzing the background of the images is another, as citizen journalism website Bellingcat has done using mapping imagery. And then there are the more traditional techniques speaking to sources on the ground, identifying potential suspects. But there are only three videos for three murders. Even with the most advanced software and techniques, these videos are testing the limits of biometric experts in the West. Tom Cheshire, Sky News. And we will ex be exploring a little bit more about facial recognition and how much can be achieved when, as you can see, you can see so little of this man in the video's uh, face. Uh, we've got an expert uh, joining us who will tell us a little bit more about the process. His name is Keith Cottenden. He's Forensic Services Director at C4. He's here with me in the studio now. Uh, welcome to you. Thanks for joining us. How reliable generally... process even if you've got very, two very clear images you know whether it be video footage or uh, a photograph to to categorically say uh, that it is the same person this is so challenging because of the uh, face covering and in the latest video there's been definite attempts by those recording the video to make subtle differences like padding within the uh, uh, the balaclava or within the covering which, which just makes the face out a little bit bigger you know so there are aware of what's going on in the background. Because normally you would obviously be able to focus on the, the one bit of the face that's visible, the eyes, uh, but presumably the shape of the head would be something that oh, the, very the, the technology would yes, look yeah. at, would it? Yeah, ab ab absolutely. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, like I say, it's a challenge if you've got uh, a very good picture and then uh, uh, a poor quality uh, video footage. Uh, and uh, databases are there, but they're not uh, very reliable at the moment and uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, talk just recently about the next generation identification system uh, you know which will give us far more uh, to go at but it still won't get away from three weeks in yeah and have we got any closer to identifying who this uh, individual is 
And I suppose we don't know what's going on, what work is being done by the security services and how far they have got, but you think the task is a tough one. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. What, what else do they have to go on? Because it's not just the pictures, is it? it the, the voice as well yeah. uh, can pr presumably be analysed. What kind of database is there, though, of, of voices? Uh, well, well uh, what we'd be looking at with the audio is, uh, again, in the latest video, there's been t attempts to, to make the tone slightly different. So those recording are aware of what is happening in the background. But uh, they're also, uh, th there's talk of these individuals using Skype, yet yeah, another social media. And uh, they're very keen to record what they do. You know, extremists do like making recordings. Yeah, and when they get uh, passionate about what they're doing, yeah, then we get good audio recordings where we can compare the voice print yeah, of what we've seen in the video so far against what they're saying on social media. And a lot of this will be based on mobile communication, them using mobile devices, because yeah, there's so much can be gained from uh, a lack of security around mobile devices. And if a voice has been distorted deliberately to try to disguise it, how easy is it to, to take that distortion away? Uh, it's difficult again, you know, but because we've now got free videos we can look at, there's lots that can be compared uh, against uh, what is out there, possibly from social media sites or from uh, intercepts of uh, mobile phone calls. And what about the, the scenery as well? I mean, is it possible to pinpoint where this could have been recorded? Yeah, I mean, that's not my area of expertise, but from what I'm reading about it, it, it must be very challenging. From the little information you see in a video, to be pinpointing from a bush that appears, you know, a mile, a mile and a half away, exactly where they are, is it, difficult. And, and, and in terms of uh, this gaining a, a great deal of publicity, clearly, obviously, um, organisations like ourselves are very careful about what pictures we do show and what we don't show, but to what extent is it helpful to intelligence services in terms of, uh, of people coming forward with information? Yeah, I mean, it's all pieces in the jigsaw, uh, and they'll be using the media coverage uh, to their advantage, uh, and just uh, also with the way that the videos are changing now show that the individuals concerned are also listening to what's been in the media, which may just lead to them making a mistake, uh, particularly around what they are doing on their mobile device and if we can pinpoint an identity and a location, then, then we're moving forward. And that's what will be going on in the background. Well, Keith Cottington, very interesting uh, to get your analysis. Thank you for joining us Thank today. You. Now, around 4 million Scottish voters are going to the polls today in a referendum that will change...